All right, so now we're going to do the Andy picking something up. So what I've done is I've opened up my um, Andy setup for animation scene, and then I've imported this scene that I'm going to give you, which is called props. Okay, and in that scene, uh, just, you can click off use namespace. You don't need to see that, and then just hit import, and then you'll have this table uh, with several props on it. So I'm just going to position this kind of in front of Andy a bit like that. And bring my Andy up to ground level. Oops. There we go. And uh, if you do not use Andy, um, these props may not be sized accordingly to your character. Okay, just so you can see if I went to my visor and I brought in um, one of the uh, characters from the visor. It overloads. Let's say I brought in the basketball player guy. You can see how big his scale is going to be. There's no way that he's going to be able to pick up any of the items on here uh, realistically. So um, you'll need to resize your table and props in order for all that to um, fit. Now if you do resize it, uh, just grab the props group and resize from there. Okay. Everything should be proportionate to a human's standards. Um, now let's go through what the props are. Okay, uh, we have a coffee mug, we have a weight, we have a wine glass, and then we have some coins or you know some discs, checkers, whatever you want to call those, just cylinders basically. Okay, so <clears throat> these are all different things that you could pick up. Now the easiest ones are going to be stuff like this, stuff like this. Um, this one's a little bit more challenging just because of how he would grab it. Um, and I would say this is probably the most challenging is to get him to realistically look like he's picking up some of these coins. Okay. So uh, we're going to just do um, this one here, but I'll cover some of the other stuff on these just so you can um, get a sense of how you would do it. Okay. So I'm going to go to my Andy character set. and I'm just going to go to my top one. So I'm grabbing the whole... Andy set and let me just scoot him a bit closer okay I don't want him against the table because then that wouldn't be realistic he's just too close to grab the coffee so maybe a little bit further back good okay and um, I'm just gonna get him into a relaxed position we always want to start relaxed we don't want him to start with his hands you know in some weird pose and there's no reference video for this uh, what I want you to do is if you're not sure of how the person would be grabbing something is to use your own body as a way to figure it out. You know, if you're going to do the coin one, figure out how you would grab the coins. You know, don't just like grab them, you know, figure out how you would in the real world grab those coins. Shoulders look a little tense. Let's just relax those. Okay, so I'm just posing Andy, making him look, making Herm look. Uh, he's kind of, you know, in a more relaxed pose. Hands have definitely got to have some some sort of uh, adjustments to these fingers. It's just not natural. So give them all a little bit of curl, and then I'll take their spread, and kind of pull it in a bit. There we go. That looks good there. Same thing here. Take it spread in some. Give the fingers a little curl.
I think I actually want to put Andy's hands on his hips. All right, give me a minute. I'm going to just pose Andy, and then I'll come back. All right, so just to kind of complicate things even further, I crossed Andy's arms. Uh, it just looked more natural um, in how Andy was standing. Okay, now there is some intersection here. You can see that the thumb's going through, so, you know, I just, as I set up my cameras, I either need to, you know, fix the thumb so it's not, which, you know, could be a little bit tricky to get it to look correct, um, just because of how, you know, uh, proportioned his hands are uh, to the rest of the body. I mean, they're pretty, pretty huge. Okay. Um, or just angle my camera so you don't see it, right? So something like that, you don't really see the intersection. Okay, so um, I'm going to set my first key at frame zero. 225 keys set. Good. And we're just going to set up the bullet points. So as far as opening his hands here, I'm just going to go up to, let's say, 20. Uh, let's say 12. 20 seems a bit, a bit far. Okay, this hand's going to have to come out first. So this is going to be my grabbing hand, and he's a righty. So he's going to go and reach for this coffee cup, so let's say about here. And this hand is just going to fall down. And of course, let baby's eyes make contact with the glass. It's a good second pose. Let's set a key here and then we'll see where we're at. There we go. That's looking good. All right, so I'm going to go up another 12. Let's say 24. And what I want to do is I want to animate um, the entire thing of Andy grabbing the drink and then starting to pick it up. And then I'll actually make the drink move with Andy's hand. Okay, so I'm going to go, let's say, up there, higher. Okay, and if we look at this, we have this coming into here. I need to also adjust this other hand so it wouldn't just stop right in the middle. I'm going to set a key. Let me just see. Yeah, that's looking good. I could also put Andy's hand on the counter here, too. That would be an acceptable thing. All right. So there we go. He's just grabbing it. So I'll go up maybe to uh, 30. And I'm going to close the hand. So all of my digits here are going to need to be curled like so and our spreads gonna have to come in even further like that and his thumbs gonna have to come down like that and even reach around and twist there we go and I'll stick the hand in there now it's gonna be a little bit of tweaking to get that to work. Now obviously <clears throat> if you've ever drank coffee before um, you'll know that there's different grips on your coffee mug. Some people will slip their fingers through, some people will grab the handle. You'll see that this specific handle Andy's pinky doesn't fit so I'm going to um, grab the circle and go down to pinky spread and spread his pinky past that, spread his ring 
right there, just kind of separate these a little bit better. And also kind of tuck the pinky a bit more, like that. Right, so now it looks like Andy's gripping it, so again we'll set a key. Oops, let me click off and then set a key. Okay, and you'll see that his fingers are going to go through the cup, and obviously we don't want that to happen. Okay, now again, we could angle this a certain way so we don't see that, but in this case, we really want to show that interaction here. So I'm going to just go in between here, and I'll just kind of pull this. back like that and then set a key and you'll see just that extra keyframe right in the middle it really gives a sense that Andy's gripping around there okay perfect and then we'll go up to let's say 40 and we'll have Andy Pick up the mug. And then he's making eye contact a little bit higher. And it's still going to be down there. Let's take the elbow down. And I'll set a key here. So here's Andy, grabs a coffee mug and picks it up. Okay, so now here's where the magic is going to come in to get that. Now, of course, I want to make sure that these 40 um, frames are good before I move on. So I'm just going to do a little play blast. Let me set this to 40. I'll set it to 50 just so I have a little bit of buffer. Uh, image, Maya from window, one, play blast. Okay, and all I'm looking for right now is timing. And the timing on this looks pretty good. Okay, I may adjust, you know, his weight um, in here. Uh, but I have to be aware that if I start doing this, you'll see that his hands are going to be moving. So any weight adjustment I do is have to be very careful. Okay, and very planned. Like this, you can see I can do that. And it's not going to affect the entire character. If I come down to this circle, that's not going to affect the entire character. Okay, so I just have to be aware of which things I can manipulate without adjusting that hand. Okay, so let's go and add ourselves some frames. There we go. So now we're going to do the swap. All right, so for the swap, we're going to need two locators. All right, so here's locator number one. I'm just going to, let's go to frame 30 where the swap is going to happen. I'm just snapping the locator right there and there is my locator show locators there we go All right so this is my table locator okay and I'm just gonna put it about the middle of the cup Okay, and then I'm going to duplicate this, scoot it over to by Andy's hand, and I'm going to call this Andy Hand Locator. All right, so um, the way it's going to work is that I have to do a parent constraint on these things, okay? So I'm going to say this guy here and this locator are going to be constrained. So I'm just going to click the locator, freeze the transform on that, and this one. I'm going to click the, lo the locator first, shift click my cup, and do a constrain parent. Now I want to make sure the maintain offset is clicked, which it is. So I'm going to say add. Now I'm going to do the same thing for this and Andy's hand. Okay. Now before I do it to Andy's hand, he has to be parented to uh, one of the controls in Andy's hand. So I'm just going to parent it, literally parent it to this box. Okay. Now that does throw some random translates in here, so I'm just going to freeze it again. Okay, and then I'm going to uh, click that, shift click this, 
constrain parent. Okay. Now, right now, if I were to just, you know, I'm at frame 30. If I were just to play, you'll see that the cup's kind of like moving with his hand and it's moving with the table. And it's kind of freaking out altogether. Okay. It's weird that it's kind of spinning right there. It's very weird. Whatever. Uh, it doesn't matter because we're not even going to use it before then. So, um, so I'm going to click on the mug. And I'm going to say that the hand locator is 0 at frame 30. So if I go back, you'll see that the cup now stays exactly locked in. All right, so let's actually go, yeah, I think at frame 30 is a good time to swap it. So I'm going to say at frame 29, I'm going to set a keyframe for both of these. Okay, and then when I get to 30, I'm just going to swap them. 0, 1, and key it. So now, before this, it's constrained to the table. It's constrained to that table locator. And then as we get to 30, you'll see that now it's constrained to Andy's hand. All right, I think I'm going to delete this key on Andy's hand. I don't think I care for that one. And then I'm going to take this one. And just pull it back to 21. It just looks weird because it hangs in, back, in. So. There we go. That didn't change any of that stuff. So now I just animate Andy as I would before. So let's go to, let's say, 50. And make Andy take a little swig of his coffee. For this one I want the elbow up a bit like that and bring it right up against his mouth. Of course, we want to get the mouth ready for this. So let's go to um, sink. Yep, there we go. A little bit of tipping towards Andy's mouth. Like that. Good. We'll set a key at 50. Let's begin preview. I want to bring the eyes in more too. It looks like they're zoomed out here. But I really want them to be focused on this coffee in front of Andy. Okay, maybe even a little bit more of a head down. Of course, we'll adjust that. There we go, and then we'll go to, let's say, 60. And then we'll tilt Andy's head back. Now, I want to tilt his head back. Also this guy here. And then put the cup in position. Obviously I don't want to do the cup in position and then try to get his head to match. Uh, that just doesn't make sense. Oh no, you poured it on yourself, Andy. Messy drinker. And I think I even want to get Andy to blink.
while he's enjoying his cup of joe. Taking a big swig of it. Pull this arm back down. Alright, we'll set a key there and let's see how that looks. We're going to have to adjust most likely the angle that it's moving up. There it is. Yep. It goes right through his face. <laughs> we'll come into the middle here. Just pull this back out. And then set a key. There we go. And we'll maybe pull back just a little bit here. Oops. I want to go down to one of these that affect the whole thing. It's easier to give it a little bit more motion. Alright, come back down. And let's see. Take the head down a bit. Push it forward again. Rotate the neck. <laughs> Get this coffee mug out of Andy's head. Let's open the eyes back up. Still a little bit high. There we go. And we'll set our key here. Big swig. Try Irish coffee. And then we'll come back down. And what I can do here is I'm just going to go back to this frame at 30. And I'm just going to copy this. And then I'm going to go up to 76. And I'm going to paste it. Here's our Andy to sit near. Grabs a cup of coffee. Takes a swig. And sets it back down. Okay. And then we'll do the um, release right here. So at 76, we're going to key this on the mug. And then we'll go to frame 77. Do our swap. And then we can just adjust Andy's hand after that and it won't affect the rest of it. Okay. So again, I can just go back and copy some keyframes. copy that one. Just pull this back at 91. And then we'll give Andy a little smile. Andy a creepy smile. All 
All right, I'm also going to go to frame 80 here. And uh, let's see, where's this? Drink the coffee here. There we go. At frame 75, that's where I want this to happen, is that this hand is going to start to come up and just wipe the mouth. Give it a little bit more character, a little bit more uh, story. Obviously his hand's going through, so let's come halfway, pull his hand out. At frame 80, I'm just going to put his hand back where it was. Now I can, you know, I don't want to overwrite this keyframe at 81, um, but I do want to keep this hand. So if I just go to 76, middle click on 81, I can just keyframe these guys again. And that way those will stay right there. So adjust his elbow. I'll just pull this across. Okay, we'll set a key and let's see. It looks like a convincing wipe. Alright, so that's good. So let me save this, which I haven't done at all. And the rig pickup cup. Alright, so now let's turn off his controls. So I'm going to say. No curves. Um, yep. Let me go to my curves again. I'm going to turn off all the controls here on the main controller. That way I can just do a play blast and see where we're at. Probably a little bit quick. We're gonna start here. All right, that drink is a little bit quick, so I want to extend the length of time that that drink happens, and then everything after that is just too quick. Okay, so here's the drink right there. Let me just oops, extend this. Now, if I take these controls here, and I just add them into my Andy group, there we go, then as I start to move these things around, then those will move too. So I'm just going to take these and just stretch them out, let's say to 120. That's good there. Alright, so let's save again. Let's play blast it again. And then we'll just keep doing this back and forth until we get something um, that's going to work for us that looks good as far as speed goes. I don't have a million keyframes in here. It's very manageable. Um, Probably a little bit more. A 
and save again and play blast again. This is a great thing about having everything on these character sets because we're seeing every keyframe that we've set in this scene for Andy. It's such a creepy smile at the end. There we go. I think the speed on that is good. Might be a little bit too quick right at the beginning. Okay, again, it's all right here. I just need to add some more frames. And because I'm going to stretch out the beginning here, what I need to do is just grab all of this, except for the first one. And then I can start to stretch these ones out. There we go. That's nice. That is nice. Okay. So now for the rest of this, um, if you have extra time, then you can go through and start to do stuff like, you know, Andy's uh, feet wouldn't stay the same. They would shift the weight. So let me just turn his controls back on here. Okay. So typically your body shifts its weight. So I could just swip, swap these out. Pull that over and just do this kind of randomly throughout, you know, when he takes his drink of uh, the coffee or whatever's in there, um, I could have his weight shift. Now, I don't want to um, just go in here and set a keyframe here. Because let's say I go to this point and I do that. Okay, so I've shifted the weight in his feet. Okay, and then I go and set a key. What's going to happen is he's fine here, and then boom, <laughs> he does a little rotate halfway through. What I want to do is I want to go into the graph editor at that point. I want to look at the attributes I would use. So I would use this rotate Z. So here's the rotate Z. And I could go through and just kind of grab, um, let's say, grab these guys here, those guys there. And then I could just shift this. So this is negative 9. So if I take this to positive 9, that will make it go to the other side. Okay. So then we would have just, just gradual shift. It happens right about the time he's drinking uh, the coffee. Okay, so it just gives us a little bit more movement um, in the character as opposed to just being super duper stiff. Uh, we can also turn the face controls on and we could start to add some more uh, facial controls inside here. Now because, because we set everything on the full character set, I can still go into the head. And if there's anything in here, because um, I've... And mine, I've set up all these so that they're all part of this character set. Uh, they're all going to show those keyframes. So I could adjust this. So maybe at this point, I'm going to add in the blink. Okay, actually, right here, I'm going to add in a blink. So right about there. I'm going to set a key. I'm going to go up to about 10. I'll set another key. And I'm going to go in the middle. Make Andy blink. Okay, so you see those keyframes that are right here. Now I can copy that. And if I decided I want Andy to blink somewhere else, right there. I can make Andy blink there too. 
Okay. And then I can also come in here, because all these guys are on my character set too, because they're in yellow. And I could... Yeah, just Andy's smile so it looks so weird. That's not it. Um, I think the eyebrows coming up will really help adjust that. Let me go to my keyframe. Let's see. Brows, emotion. That seems to help. Let's see the lips. That might help there. <laughs> Alright, let's set that. That's good. It's not as creepy. We'll go back to that and just adjust some of these a little bit more. We just have too much of a smile, Andy. I think it's probably better where it was. There we go. Now, noticing that my keyframes are at 172.31, and these ones are fine, those ones are weird. Okay, so I'm just going to jump back to my Andy. And this is just something that happens as we um, start stretching keyframes out. And the graph editor. Come on. Uh, let me go to my outliner and grab my Andy. There we go. There you go. So this is everything. So I'm just going to grab everything here and just go to Edit Snap Option Box. And I want to snap this to time. Okay. So what that's going to do is make sure that all my keyframes are exactly at um, exact frame intervals as opposed to these half intervals. <laughs> Such a creepy smile. All right, so that's it. All right, so then you would light it, find a good camera angle to show this off. Obviously, if we're uh, down here, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense for Andy to be looking off to the other side. So we could always have a camera just kind of panning around as Andy's doing his stuff. All right, so now here's some of the other challenges if you uh, want to try something else. This is the assignment is, you know, the coffee mug here. But if you want to try something else just to um, experiment, here's a weight. So obviously how Andy grips it is going to be different. What he does with it is going to be different. Um, with this, um, you never grab the actual wine glass up here. That's why they have you know this big bowl and this tiny stem. You grab the stem. So basically you're using your index, middle, and thumb to grab this while your other fingers are kind of uh, tucked in or if you're fancy, they're pulled out, okay? And sometimes you can use all um, three except for the pinky, and the pinky is kind of extended, okay? 
Um, for the coins here, obviously, it's going to be a little bit trickier because you can't just like have him um, grab onto a coin, right? He has to use his fingertips to pick up the coin. So that's where it becomes a bit trickier. Now, you could also try to um, have Andy swipe the coins into his hand and maybe put them into a pocket or whatever, right? So those are there just for fun. Um, a lot of times when they're doing like robotic stuff and they're trying to figure out how uh, you know how refined the robot is or how uh, sophisticated the system um, they have tables with all these items on here and they make sure that the robot can pick them up and so this is like one of those items that they would have a robot try to pick up okay so it uh, basically the same thing that we're doing right so there we go so that's how you get a, your character to pick something up